Is there anything that you feel can't be touched or shouldn't be touched um, in humour? I, I don't think so. I, I think any subject can be made um, uh, funny. Don't necessarily say I can make any subject funny, but um, don't think there is an area which cannot be touched. I was thinking, I was thinking the other day, um, a sketch, I mean, there's absolutely nothing funny about somebody being uh, put in the electric chair. But for me, there is something quite funny about a bloke sat in the electric chair with his mind concentrated, as Dr. Johnson so stupidly said, um, <laughs> waiting to be electrocuted, and uh, this bloke coming in and finding something wrong with the works and saying, oh, blimey, who put this lot in? Your blue is crossed with your brown wire. And uh, a long discussion of, um, you know, um, electrical parts and why it's not working. That strikes me as funny in the, as, as, as a situation, not for the bloke sitting in the chair, but you could make a comedy sketch out of it, possibly. There must be a suspicion, there mustn't there, that you have, in a sense, run out of material and that you've now reached a point of using filth which you know is commercial and you know because of your reputation you can sell a lot of records but that actually it's a sign of a drying up of inventiveness yeah but it ain't um the reason for that is that um Dudley and i worked for four years in a stage show we haven't done a television series for i think um seven years uh and there's a whole generation of young people who probably only know us for uh, Derek and Clive. Um, but um, we were due to be doing a series this summer for the Beeb, Dudley and myself. Obviously, we're not going to do Derek and Clive uh, for a Not Only But Also series. Um, I don't think we'd be doing exactly what we were doing when we were doing Not Only But Also, but it would be um, entertainment of a totally different nature. Um, but that's all come to an end, really. Your relationship with Dudley Moore came to an end when he went to America and started making films. He stayed on in America, and his number one priority at the moment is to make films. But there is no actual end to the partnership. It's just that we haven't done a series together over here, which we'd both like to do, um, for a long time. We but will. Fairly soon, I hope. But haven't you been left high and dry, in a sense, because you relied very much on your partnership with him? And if you well, can't it was, work it with was him, a remarkable. It, it's a remarkably comfortable relationship because um, it all comes so naturally. And that makes it delightful. Um, no, but that's not what I mean. What I mean uh, is that, that you worked mess, with him and you can't... doesn't leave me high and dry in that um, I can write a series for myself and other people but you no, haven't. I haven't done it yet, no. I've written uh, 15 minutes of the first 30 minutes of the, for the pilot uh, with E.L. Whisty as a central character. Um, and again, um, that, that I think would be different from a not only but also. While he was still at university in the late 50s, Peter Cook had already made a name for himself, writing comic sketches for a hit review in the West End. He was also learning his trade as a performer in the university's own comedy theatre, The Footlights. Well, I was, a, I suppose, yes, I was a star in Cambridge. And Cambridge actually seemed to be the hub of the world. We didn't think all that much of the outside world. And um, when I left, I was fully equipped to um, stay at Cambridge forever, in a way. Thank you. Was it like this when you had it? Um, no, it was, it was rather more grimy. It, it looked a bit smaller than this. and. Um, must have been the same size, obviously, but um, it's been painted white. What was it like to be the idol of your generation at Cambridge, which you were, really, weren't you? I didn't think of it uh, in those terms, but um, I suppose the biggest sign was that um, voices and catchphrases of mine were going round, in, at least in footlight circles. I was never to do anything to do with the union and that um, sort of thing. Very pleasurable. People imitating you? Yes. Which they do still, don't they? To a certain extent, yes. Yeah. Certain voices creep in now and then, yes. 
Do, what do you feel when people come up to you and use a voice or use a phrase that you know is yours or began as yours? Um, I'm always very pleased. Like I think I, one of the, my proudest achievements, I think, is to have started your actual, your actual this, your actual that. I think that was me. I'm very proud of it, if, if it was me. Are there other dangers in that early success? I don't, I don't really know. I just enjoyed it a lot, and um, I've done fairly well since, and I've enjoyed that a lot. Um, if I start feeling tremendously gloomy about my career at some stage later, I may look back and say, well, yes, it was because I was successful too early, and that's the reason. But no, it, it, I, I can't really see them. You don't feel there are, there are penalties or prices to be paid for the, for the success or for the, for the effort of it? No, it seemed, it seemed effortless because the work was so enjoyable and um, I was prolific and uh, no. I was thinking of, of one thing which you uh, have talked about or commented on and which was reported at the time, which was that you had a drink problem at one point and I wonder whether that was a, true, and B, whether it was because of the, the pressure you were putting yourself under? Uh, the only time I've seen anything reported about drink was um, uh, when I was touring Australia with Dudley. And uh, we were very well entertained in Australia. And I tended to have too much to drink before the show, and we reached an agreement that I wouldn't have a drink before the show. And um, on the whole, I kept to it. Well, I mean, was it spoiling your performances? Uh, no, it was spo spoiling the performance for Dudley um, in that I would wing off in various directions. It wasn't sort of noticeable to an audience, but I'd take off and ad lib all over the place. Very annoying for him. Did it, did it um, disturb you or worry you? Um, it disturbed me that... Um, it angered Dudley and caused uh, difficulties there. Happened a bit in the States as well. He used to get very, very cross with me about that. He did? Yes, rightly so. Why? What with me winging off totally away from the sketch and um, having a very good time myself and him not. Extremely annoying. When you look back on 20 years since you were here, starting off yeah. in Footlights and with the things that have happened since. What do you feel? Do you feel a great sense of, of achievement? Do, are you aware of what other people say about you, that you've actually totally changed the face of English humour, revolutionised it in some way? Well, who said that? There was a very nice quote from John Cleese, I understand, and... The Mo Guardian. Most of the people who most of the people who worked with you have said that that you were the person who showed them the way, or that you were the most inspired humorist of all of them. Well, this is no time for false modesty. I agree, I agree completely. Um, in one fairly substantial area of comedy, um, I feel that in the same way in, in my time. Um, in my view, Spike did it um, for a whole generation of comedy with a goon show. You really do feel it about yourself? Yes. I was afraid for a moment you were teasing me again. No, not teasing you at all. Peter Cook, thank you very much. <laughs>